Vancouver. Unfortunately, I have to reschedule. There's a lot that goes on to getting in and out of our countries, and until that's a little easier, I'm going to have to postpone the Vancouver and the Edmonton shows. Uh, But Thursday, March 3rd, I will be at Zany's for one night only, and Friday, March 4th, and Saturday, March 5th, I'll be in Lexington. Get all your tickets at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Please, if you're watching the show, please hit that subscribe button. It, it really helps us out a lot. Means a lot to the show, and it's a free way to help. All right. Also, the Patreon. Every month, the Patreon grows, and every month we get crazier and crazier stories. Yeah, I told you about the girl that had two pussies. Yeah, I told you about the guy that died that we that lives that we talked to whose whose rib cage got shoved through his back. Have you heard that? Nah. Uh, yeah, I told you about the guy that fell off a cliff and had to spend th- what was it a day and a half in the wilderness, paralyzed. These are the stories. A guy who who solved an 18-year-old cold case. Who's doing that in comedy? Me. Honeydew with y'all. It's five bucks a month. You sign up for a year. You're getting a month free. You get the Honeydew a day early ad free at no additional cost. All right? Come on out and see me on tour. Uh, the Night Pass Nation tour will be in Nashville, Tennessee, March 3rd, one night only. March 4th and 5th, <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, all tickets are available at ryansickler.com. All right? That's the deal right there. You know what we're doing over here. We highlight the lowlights. These are the stories behind the storytellers. Beyond excited, waiting three years for this one, to have one of the best storytellers in the world on the podcast. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the machine is here. Burt Kreischer, welcome to the Honeydew. It is good to be here. And I should say, I'm in Huntsville, Alabama, Asheville, North Carolina. That's what I'm talking about. Roanoke, Richmond, Norfolk. I'm hitting the whole East Coast. Dude, I'm doing shows in Baltimore. I just, Where? I, I don't know. I just saw that, and I added a night. Is it the Model? Uh, on April 8th and April 9th, I'm at the Model. Yeah, the Lyric. That's yeah. where I was with Tom. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's, a, that's the theater in Baltimore. If you I started be. thinking about doing a Patreon. Can I tell you, like, I, I, something happened and something shifted in me um, where I, I, I used to fucking put my whole life on Instagram. I mean, all of it. My yeah. kids, my house. You knew every room in my house. You knew everything. You knew my dog's name. You knew, I, you knew the street I lived on. I, I would, I would. Bert's got new lampshades. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> everything you did. Pillows. And, the, and then we got doxxed pretty heavily, like pretty aggressively, like my phone number, my address, everything got out there. And but uh, it's all so easy anyway to get. So For twenty dollars, you can get everyone shit. Yeah, yeah. I, and I had to get a new phone number, and we bought a new house. And I am super nervous about putting shit out there. Like I like for the first time in my life, I, I'll Instagram. But it, there's only like two places I'll Instagram in, in my house. Like I don't feel. And so I was thinking about doing a Patreon where it was my Instagram stories or finding a Patreon and then putting you on like a different thread mm-hmm. on my Instagram. Cause I enjoy Instagramming. I enjoy cause it gets me out of my like head sometimes. Like if I wake up with an anxiety attack, I'll just, if I put an Instagram story like this morning, oh, this is a perfect example. Watch this. This is, this is la- last night partied a little bit, uh, did a podcast with Brian Simpson. We put back a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. Party a little bit. He was just to, on. He's fucking. He is great. Dude. So I, I wake up, I'm a little bit like, I'm a little bit out of it. I'm like, fuck, I'm just, uh, I don't, like, I, I'm like, what I, What am I going to do? Just sit on my phone and I go get up. And if I do an Instagram story, then I'm held accountable. So then my Instagram story is. Shine, ladybugs. Let's get to it today. Right? So I, I sit, I sit and I say, I'm going to work out. Then I know that if I put it up there, I go to work out. I go, and then I, I kind of put my day out there, and I go, I'm going to work out. I'm going to sauna. I'm going to pull a plunge. I got ADR at 11. I got a podcast at 3. I kind of put my day out there, and it gets me it, it, get, it gets me to do it. And so, but, I, but it, I, I have been weird about it. And so I was, I was thinking about Patreon. Dude, it's, it's been great. I, I just, I also, 
it's not I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but I, I've always been able to. I can talk to anybody. You know what? Yeah. I can listen to anybody. I can't. That's the difference. I can't. I can listen, listen to anybody. I don't know what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have believe such, it too. Bro. I have such I have such a problem listening. <laughs> when Brian Simpson's over at my house doing a podcast and he's t- the most like and then at six I was put in a foster care. All I think is how does how would that affect Burt Kreischer? Like that even like I don't know if and maybe that's empathetic listening where someone tells you something and you go But ask if, that. Why not say that? Say, I, Oh my I, god, I, here's that this is how I would feel about dude, that. I had Amanda Knox on my podcast and I told Foxy her the, Noxy, I told bro, her the machine story. <laughs> I mean, I'm fucking horrible. It's I'm horrible. But I, but I own it. Like, if you hate me because of it, I go, yeah, you should hate me because of it. I don't fucking... I'm, hey, that's a great story. Check this one out. Yeah. <laughs> really? And so, innocent. Okay, now I don't need another rest. Keep going. Keep going. When I was 22 years old, I got involved with the Russian mafia. Here's how it happened. But the, it's so fucking... I can't help it, man. I think it's, it is who I've been my entire fucking life. If you come... If you get, if you open up a... a like, uh, we have a sponsor. I forget. Skylight Frames. I bought Skylight Frames for all my friends. All our friends. All our friends. So that I could put pictures of myself in their houses. I so see. that when yeah, I go yeah, to yeah, their yeah. house, I get excited to see. Oh, I remember that vacation. Yeah. Like, I c- remember like when photos were a thing. And mm-hmm. people would go, hey, you should see my photo album. And then you'd be like, am I in any of these? Because I don't give a fuck about seeing right. your Like, I'm not that person. I was only looking at photo albums if I was at a girl's house and I knew, like, it led to, you know, some action. I'm like, I don't fucking flip through your Disney World shit. That's, like, that's an old school to- thing, too. It it's is. Like, is. That's gone. And you'd be like, who's that? Yeah. And then you'd want, you'd have a back. I'd write backstories about people in my head. <laughs> go, who's that? And I'm my cousin. She lives in uh, North Carolina. And you're like, <laughs> shit, for real? Dick. Yeah. Uh, I, I yeah. mean, I fucking... I was a person that could, I was never the guy that people were like, you know who we got to set you up with? Bert. You would fall in <laughs> yeah, love with yeah, Bert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, but, and I was always the guy, like, I always thought, like, and I, I remember people, I'm sure there's people, but I was like, I'll never fall in love. I'll never fall in love. And then I did. All right. Let's, let's do this because here's what I want to know. I know, I, I said this to you outside, you know, and not to parallel it, but when, when Brody passed and we all went to his memorial, before the comedians got up to speak, his childhood friends, uh, baseball coach, guys that that he knew, got up and they called him Steven. You know, that was the interesting part, right? And we called him Brody, and it dawned on me like, oh yeah, this guy had a whole life before we ever met this guy. Mm-hmm. And and what I know of you, like your history, is that is begins for me, and I think a lot of people in entertainment is the Van Wilder. Yeah. So what I want to know is. Before all that, you know, talk well, it, to me. Who are you? Where are you from originally? I know you're Florida, but you know, how many brothers and sisters? Talk to me about your parents, because you you still have everybody alive. Yeah, everyone's alive. So, Knock on wood. I mean, I, so I think where, about it. I think where about are you that. born? Born in St. Petersburg, uh, Florida. Are you youngest, oldest, only? Oldest. oldest. Typical oldest too. Of how many? Two, three. Three two, I have two sisters. Okay. One's like three years younger than me, two years younger than me, and then one's 10 years younger than me. Okay. She was an Same accident. parents? Same parents, okay. yeah. She was a fucking mistake. <laughs> 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 we didn't, we, my parents were building a house, and they didn't. They definitely didn't plan her because there was no room for her. There was, no one built <laughs> yeah, a room for her. Yeah, build another bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> there was, it was a three-bedroom house, <laughs> and then she showed up, and they're like, oh, I guess you're going to just sleep with them. <laughs> But I slept, I slept with my parents until I was like 10. What? Uh, maybe older. In the same bed? In the same bed, yeah. I slept with my parents until I was like, I mean, I could, I could, every I could, night? I could tell you, I could tell you older. It would sound creepy, but like, I, I would say, I would definitely say 10 because I know that we moved into that house at 10. That's, that's my stepson over there. He's fucking 6'5, still sleeping in his mom's bed. I mean, I, I have, I have <laughs> real anxiety separation issues. You slept. In your parents' bed till you were at least ten or eleven, and they didn't be like one hundred percent ten because I remember doing it when we moved into our new house. They didn't say get the fuck out of here, or they kind of no. like coaxing, or they were just loving like get in here. I don't think my parents. My, they never my, like Bert. You should probably go sleep in your own room. My parents didn't have weren't like that. That type of parent didn't exist. I mean, it did, but like most parents back then didn't have like curfews or like times you went to bed. We didn't have nap times. We didn't have bedtimes. No. We stayed. I stayed up. I would stay up until like 
midnight, one o'clock, and then just go get in bed with my mom and dad. And my sister would be in there. My youngest sister would be in a crib in there. I mean, we all, and then as when we got our new house, we had, so we lived in like a redneck, redneck neighborhood. I mean, I'm sorry. Born in St. Petersburg. Okay. Moved to Philly for like the first four, five, three years of my life, whatever. Oh, you, you had a little Philadelphia for three years? Yeah, oh, okay. my sister was born in Philly. Oh, okay. In Bryn Mawr. And then my dad got a job. Uh, my dad got a job and got accepted to law school in Florida, maybe or something like that. Like he moved back to Florida. I'm not back good with, I'm not good with like details that don't involve me. <laughs> I wasn't making any decisions back then. <laughs> you just along for the ride. I was like, whatever. <laughs> uh, first grade, like first first legit memories I have. We live in this place called Riverbend in Temple Terrace. Uh, met some friends, Patrick Fagan, who's I've known my whole life. Uh, this is back in Florida. This now? is in Florida. Okay. We moved back to Florida. Um, I remember distinctly being affected very young by tornadoes and hurricanes. Like being like natural disasters were in Florida, they were always around the corner. Like bad storms. Uh were you scared because you had heard about them and you did the hall like we had to do the training in the hallway, or had you been through one? Uh we had been through one, I guess our maybe my I went to a place called Bowman Center in Carrollwood, and a tornado rolled through, and on Dale Mabry flipped a, a a truck over, and we were just off Dale Mabry, and they came in. You know, I still to this day have like real issues with when actual panic happens in real life, meaning you're at a pool and someone goes, "Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter?" Like yeah. that energy, oh. that energy cuts to the core of me, and 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 and. And I, 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 but I remember feeling, I remember being like, that shit just shows up at Bowman Center. This lady just comes in and goes, there's a tornado and everyone on the desks. They flipped a truck over on Dale Mabry. And everyone's like, motherfucker. <laughs> like I was, th- I was thinking. what is this desk yeah, going to do, bitch? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm finger painting, bitch. I got to clean my hands. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then, and then go to. Oblivious to the fact, we I go to first grade and it's like a private school where you have to wear uniforms, and I'm so fucking excited until I get there and my dad's like, uh, he's like, um, I get there and I was like, where are you gonna sit? And he's like, huh. I go, this is my seat. Where's your seat? And he's like, I'm, I'm not here with you. And I go, he's like, they're not sleeping. Yeah, and I was like, well, I don't want to be here without you. And he was like. He's like, buddy, it's called school. This is what you do. My dad's a real. So you didn't have a kindergarten or preschool or anything like that. I did, but I but Don't my worry. mom was a teacher or something. Oh, like so she you... was always in the other room. Right. Or okay, it was just very like you always never... had a security blanket. Yeah, there. I always had a security blanket. In the first grade, my world was fucking rocked. I mean, rocked, fucking sh- flipped upside down. This was my nine eleven. I mean, <laughs> this was great. It's hard. They. they <laughs> My dad says to me, my dad says to me, he goes, uh, buddy, you just got to make friends. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I don't, I, I don't have any, I don't want to make friends. I got friends. You're my friend. Stay with me. And he goes, my dad says to me, here's the deal. I'm going to be in the parking lot in the van outside. I'll stay there all day. Okay. If you need me, just come get me. And I was like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. And he was like, all right, cool. And he just left. My dad just fucking left. <laughs> so I'm middle of first grade, like first, you know, 15 minutes, I just get up, I'm going to just check the window. And I just walk over to the window, take a look out. Mrs. Thompson was like, where are you going? And I was like, I'm just checking on my dad. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go run down and check on him. I can't see the check van. On yeah, and he, I can't see the I can't van. see the van, so I'm going to go down to the parking lot. She's like, you're not going to the parking lot. And I was like, no, 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 my dad's down there. I'll see you there. She's like, your dad's not here. And I was like, no, he's there. And then she took me out to the railing. No. And there was no van. And I was like, cooch. <laughs> I mean, huh? <sighs> And I walked back in, and I went table to table, to everyone, desk to desk, going, "Our parents left us. Our parents. Our parents left us. We're, we're. What if we never see them again?" And now everyone's like, "We're not seeing our parents again." And I was like, "We may <laughs> never see riot. them again." They said they're going to be back. What if they don't come back? What if we're here forever? Miss Thompson's like, "Motherfucker!" <laughs> so she grabs me, she puts me in her de- in a desk at the front of the school, in front of facing the class. Oh, no, not that scene. And holds my hand and teaches class, holding my hand as I sob, cry, staring no. for the entire fucking day. Just, there it is. Oh, Brian Callahan tried to rescue me. <laughs> Samantha <laughs> Dude. They, they like, they're like, you know, hey, man, calm down. And I was like, ah! And it was like that. 
It was like that for like my first fucking week, week of first grade. It was panic. And and my oh, and I mean I was and then and then all of a sudden I got out of it. And uh and then all of a sudden it's like my real per- like the, the guy that I am inside, right? Like real Burke Reicher. The one that the one that was the funniest guy in college, the one that was the funniest guy in high school, the one that got into stand up and didn't understand how it worked but knew he was funny, that guy came out like first grade, I get dressed uh, like I'm like I hear talent show and I'm like, "Oh, fuck, yes." And I decide I'm going to be Kiss. I'm going to be Gene Simmons. Fuck, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to fucking cuz cuz one of my favorite things to do was air guitar. Air guitar sing and dance, run around and flip around in my underwear. And so I dress for school, for the talent show, for school in my mom's leotards, um, two leather, two chain belts she had, uh, co- do my own makeup. This is like fucking seven in the morning. Yeah. Do my own with a cape and, and, and a pair of her boots. And I get in the car with my dad and he was like, what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> and I was like, it's a talent show today. And he was like, it was a, it's like in the middle of the day. And so I want to make sure I was like set for it. But this is like who I really am. In in like yeah. the 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 I th- I think the reason like my friends, people like me is I am really this person. This is the guy who drinks a gallon of Kool-Aid and doesn't realize <laughs> you're not supposed to drink a gallon yeah. of blood. Or like showers in yeah. pools. Yeah. And like this is really who I am. And so and like we're we're like people laugh at it and then you're kind of lost while they're laughing. Like if you look at that gallon clip, a gallon of Kool-Aid clip, when Tom starts laughing, oh, you can can't. see that I don't know why yeah, he's laughing like, at first. Oh, I'm like yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh fuck, this is kind of weird. Like, oh god damn it. You can see it in my eyes. Tom's laughing hard as shit, and I'm laughing with him because I'm like confused. Oh. So we get to the talent show, and uh his name is Daniel Kaufman. He was a kid, he was a little older than me. He had a violin, and we're backstage. Brian Callahan was my manager. We were first grade. He was with me. And you just solo Gene? Like you don't have another you don't have Peter, Paul, or Ace with you, bro? I didn't have a guitar. (laughs) I I I just I just was like I was like I remember this kid, Daniel Kaufman. I want to say that's his real name. Daniel Kaufman (laughs) was gonna play the violin. He was like a fucking fourth grader or something. And I was like the fucking savant over there. He's got he's got a violin and and he goes, What are you? And I said, I'm I'm Kiss. And he goes, Oh, okay. He's like, what instrument do you play? And I was like, I don't have one. He was like, what are you going to play? And I was like, I'm like, like thinking, like, I didn't think this through at all. <laughs> like, I hadn't planned a routine. I just was like, I'll get, music up there. I'll get up there. The mu- no, I had the record. I okay. had the record. What song? The- what song are you uh, going to do? I want to rock and roll all, all night. night. And you're going to play nothing. And party every day. I mean, <laughs> you keep on riding. You, you keep on riding. <laughs> yeah. And I'm looking at a fucking K through five going like, because I can't hear you. <laughs> and they're just like. They're like, I, we don't know that we're not familiar with the lyrics. I was obsessed with kids. We don't want to hear yeah. you. Yeah. And I'm just and I just went out there and rocked out, sweated my makeup Fuck down. Yeah. Brian Fuck Callahan yeah. gave me a hug. He's like, you fucking killed it. And I and I, but I was like, I was definitely the guy that was like, that went amazing. <laughs> and everyone else was like, he's a fucking idiot. Yeah. Like I, that was that, by the way, that that thread traveled through, like, that went fantastic yeah and everyone's like i'm not certain that you saw the same fight we were doing but uh but yeah that was like first grade and then and then i don't know i think i think i was pretty regular like second were you a good student grades no, wise or no, no? I, I i'm dyslexic so okay. i've always had a re- but not like textbook dyslexic but dyslexic i don't know how it works but i've, I've always had a hard time reading i've always had a hard time reading out loud a really hard time reading out loud. Talk to me about the that or when you go around the room and, and you have to read out loud. Like where? <laughs> you mean, hold on, hold on. You mean motherfuckers like David Germain who could kill it. You're like, dude, what the fuck? Were you raised on a pirate ship and you had to read them to sleep every night? How the fuck can you do this so well? There were guys... There were guys with lisps that were better at it than me. Oh, yeah. And then they go, they go, uh, Bert, and I go, uh-huh. And fucking panic. I mean, just panic Get throughout. Get warm and I'll oh, start sweating uh, and be like, um, okay, okay. And like, I'd, I'd fuck up words like through or thorough or just, I mean, to this day, I, the, uh, there's the other day, they were like, we got to get rid of all the tyranny. That's not the word I read. We got to get rid of all the trannies. And I'm like, what <laughs> the fuck? They put that on CNN? 
How fucking that, how is that even allowed? <laughs> the other day I walked into the I walked into the kitchen and I said to Leanne, holy shit, did you know Mississippi is trying to outlaw adoption? She was like, What? I go, Yeah, Mississippi's outlawing adoption. She goes, Abortion, fuckface. And I went, <laughs> Oh. Just, oh. oh, so they want orphans. Okay, okay, they want them. All right. But yeah, I, I'm, I was dyslexic. And so your brain learns how to work differently. You learn cheats so and who, shortcuts. Wait, I, I've learned from this show that that's actually hereditary. So who passed it to you then? Do you ever have I'm mom sure or dad? I'm sure my dad. I'm sure yeah. my dad. I'm sure my dad. My dad is one of those people that he likes. I mean this the right way. He likes, uh, I don't know the right way to say this, because it's not an underdog. And it's not the loser, but he, my dad believes he's nothing. He'll, he'll always fail, so it makes him work harder. And I, I think I inherited that and somehow because, like, I don't think – I know for a fact I'm not the most talented comic. I've seen people perform. So when I get ready to do a special, that's why I'm, like, blown away by very talented people who go, yeah, 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 I ran it. I went on the road last week. I've been running a little bit, you know, but, yeah, I'm ready for it. And you go, you're ready for a special, and you did, like, three weekends? Like, I have been on the road. Every single fucking week of this year, except for one that since they opened it up and I, and I have next week off, that's a week off and I have another week off, but I'm on the road and I add shows, I'll do whatever I can because I need to run the material to get it good. Cause I'm not as good as Chappelle. I'm just not, man. I watched his special working out today. I'm just never going to be him. No, I, that never will happen. Yet. But if I work hard enough, maybe people will be like, Oh, that's, I also like Bert also. You, you know what I mean? You just got to be the best you for yours. Yeah. That's yeah. it. I'm That's never going like, to be. I, just, I have to work harder than everyone else, and, and I, I need to do it a certain way. But yeah, I, I that panic of of school, oh, I mean, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. They'd read out loud. Mm -mm, I couldn't. But would you say no? I would. No, I would read out loud, and, I would, and then just get mocked. But I was really good at memorizing shit. And I was a really good actor at a young age. Like in fifth grade, they took us on this, like a, as a touring company to do Shakespeare. And I could memorize lines instantaneously. And, and like, I mean, I'd have to have someone read them to me, which is really fucking fascinating. So when we did The Machine, I, now I can't even see, right? Because I'm I, like, I, I'm so old, I can't see. And our director was making our scripts in like little tiny things. So we get to set and I'd. I couldn't see the script. And by the way, I'm also dyslexic, so I'm saying the wrong words anyway. And so I had to have this Serbian lady, Anya, we would do rehearsal. Me, Mark, my co-lead, we would rehearsal, and this lady, Anya, would stand in for me, and she would read my lines to the, in, in a scene, and I would hear them, her read them. And then the next time we would do rehearsal, I'd say them next to her, and, and she'd go, you're missing one, and I or something. And then... After that, I was off book. I was off book, That's and I could crazy. I could remember. Yeah. I knew them all, and I knew long monologues. I knew like I knew it all. And Mark Hamill actually said to me, "You have an insane." He said to me one time because I, I also wanted to change scripts because I was like because I never was really married to the script. So I was like I was like let's change the scene. Let's do this. And Mark pulled me aside one time. He goes, "You have to understand, you have an insane ability to memorize that not everyone has. A lot of people have to work." All night long to memorize their lines. You are drinking wine all night in Serbia, going out, running in the morning, not looking. But I also wrote, helped write the script or, you know, create the script. I've been reading it for eight months. Would you like have her read it and then listen to a recording of her while you're running or anything? No, no, like no, that? no, no, no. She'd just no. read it right there. She'd go, I am the machine. My, I, uh, <laughs> oh, I want her. Father, I, I love her. you. I want. It was so fucking hilarious. <laughs> she would go, her name was Anya. <laughs> And she would go, uh, she would go, I'm trying to think of one of my lines. Um, Daughter, don't go. You're acting like a cunt. <laughs> and, but it was, and she had the cutest accent. She was fucking hilarious. But that's how it worked. And that, and that, and that all through high school. I mean, I never, never was a good student. Never could figure out. Never was like, I don't know. I remember people applying to colleges. I took the SAT. I took the SAT and I fucking aced it. And I was like, what? "What'd you get? Fucking like thirteen fifty or Dude, something?" You blew I think, me away. I remember the first time I took it, I got like a nine fifty, and then the next, and then I took a class to learn it. And they taught you, you know, some tricks. Next time I take it, I fucking aced it. Applied to Florida and Florida State, got accepted to Florida State. And I was like, "I'm done. I'm done with school. I'll go to Florida State." And even all through Florida State, I don't even know. I, mean, I never studied for a test. I just, I never studied for a test. I never studied for anything. My entire life, I've never studied for anything because I just, I didn't know. 
people would go like, take notes. And I'd be like, I don't, understand. I don't know what that means. Do you remember like you get a notebook and sit in class and they go, Miss Christ, are you taking notes? I was like, uh-huh. And then I write, Miss Christ, are you taking notes? And I was like, is that part of the notes? And then they'd be like, and then I'd, I'd start like uh, like class and then put a one and then an A under that and be like, what's supposed to go there? Like, I didn't know what to write down. I know the important things they were saying. I'm like, you ain't, you ain't giving us dittos? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was always, where's my ditto? Yeah, but 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 what's interesting is I was the fucking I was a cool kid up until eighth grade, like cool kid in eighth grade, sixth seventh grade only hung out with older kids. Seventh grade hung out with ninth graders. Eighth grade hung out with ninth and tenth graders. What shifted? Were you good at sports? Were you making everybody? I was really laugh? good at sports. I was really good at sports. No, I didn't make anyone laugh. I was super serious almost. Oh really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I was like a John. What's the not John Winners? Not John. What's the fucking guy who did all the movies in the 80s? Pretty in Pink and shit. Waters? John, no, the, no, not John Waters either. Oh, 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 uh, uh, oh, shame on all of us. Uh, of course. Yeah. He did, I think he did Home Alone. I think he did everything. 16 Candles, yeah. all of them. So I was like, I was, I have a very, very, very deep romantic Defeated. side of me that longed to have a girlfriend, longed to be in love, and like longed for all of that, which I was ashamed of. And so I identify with those ducky characters and and Anthony Michael Hall characters. I identify with that. But I was a cool kid. I was great at sports. And this small school was shifted. Um, was I went to an all boys Catholic high school, and man, that was like, that was like, uh, it was like day one, get your dick knocked in the dirt. Like really, it was like I mean, that was my Oz. Like that was my like, <laughs> that was my You're like, Oz. like that was when I was like, I'm in the big house now. Like. I mean, you had bullies. When I, I don't understand. I mean, I know people have bullies that say mean things to them. Bullies would attack you or touch you or fucking assault you. Um, I, like it was It was like, I mean, and I'm, I'm not making it worse than like it needs to. I'm making it worse than it needs to be. Like I'm telling you, but like fucking some fucking senior would just come up and just fucking clothesline you and you'd be on the ground unconscious. Like, what happened? <laughs> Or, or, or like, or like, I remember one time I walked in, someone yelled "food fight," and I got hit with an apple, and I was like, "Fuck me, that hurt." Or, or, or I remember one dude got my face, like he walked by and he bumped into one of my friends, and I started laughing, and then he comes back, he goes, what "The fuck are you laughing at?" He was like five six, but he's a senior and he was hairy and he was like greasy. He was like, "What the fuck are you laughing at?" And I was like, "I like an idiot." I said, "You." Because I was laughing at him. Yeah. He flipped my food in my lap. And he was like, get up, motherfucker. Get up. And I was like, the fuck did I do? What did I say? What did I say? So, like, it was like all of a sudden you're a child where you were cool at one school. Yeah. And good at sports. And now I sucked at sports. Because Cuban kids, they were fucking playing sports. <laughs> yeah. They were, like, yeah. fucking yeah. good. You were like, how did you? How did everyone get so good at sports all of a sudden? Like, did you guys not have parents? Like, why the fuck are you so good? <laughs> <laughs> didn't make the basketball team. Didn't make the baseball team. Had to had to, had to join the track team and the swimming team because I was like, I want to play sports and I'm good, but I'm just not. I'm like, I didn't have like I wasn't like shaving yet. Like everyone was shaving, and I was just like, what the fuck? But I had a good, I had a really close group of friends. Like like a big group of friends. I won't say their names. I'm sure they don't want to be associated with me. As a, like, but is that like, born out of like youth sports or is that like middle school guys, high school? How how far back do these dudes go? So here's the interesting intersection. I played baseball pretty competitively my whole life, and we played at a place called Forest Hills. Now everyone in the south. Now I mean, I'm I'm, I'm speaking across the board. I don't mean to like. It's, I know that when you say something, people can take it and have it mean something else. But I'm just saying. There was like rich kids baseball and poor kids baseball. This is Burt Kreischer's insight, okay? Poor kids baseball was pony baseball, okay? Pony baseball was like you could steal bases, kids could pitch. Um, That's the league I played. <laughs> Dad's drank. I mean, Our was coaches like, smoked. Yeah, they smoked. Leaning they, over, you're like, come on, this is how you bunt. You're like, yeah. God damn, that I, thing's burning I my eye. I remember playing third base for the Yankees. I was So if I was, if I was six when I played Pinto, I was maybe eight years old. Maybe eight or eight years old, and I remember a coach. I remember two coaches betting a steak dinner that they could hit baseballs past me, and they're like, "He's in the hot box, Chrysler. Get up on the grass. I bet you. I bet you a steak dinner. I can hit a ball past Chrysler." And then the guy was like, "Steak dinner, you can't. Chrysler got a great glove." And I was like, oh, "What? what how am I in this bet?" <laughs> and then these dudes, these grown men, drunk, just taking crack, just yeah. crack. And I'm like, "I caught it on accident. I wish I hadn't. I want this bet to be over." 
But like that was so Pat was pony baseball. Now in pony baseball, you played uh, you played. I, c- I could be off on this, but you mostly played like the uh, the Dwight Gooden schools, like over in Hillsboro, that area. I forget what the, I forget the name of that Belmont Heights. Um, I think that's the name of them. You played town and country, which was more Cuban. You played like you and and then Forest Hills was very redneck, like very redneck, and. And a bunch of other places, but that was who you played. And then the other school, the other people, they they played in the World Series championship. Like the kids that go to play yeah. in the World Series. And and my group of friends that I played with, grow, all growing up, all played in town and country. And then when we went to public, when we went to Jesuit, all those dudes I've been playing against in all star tournaments my whole life all went to Jesuit. Okay. And so I knew them. I knew like Brad Radke, Ty Rodriguez, um, uh, uh. Fernando, like I, I knew all these dudes because we'd all been playing baseball together. And then all the kids that had gone, because you watched our same age group who played the different baseball, the rich white kids baseball, they had gone and won the World Series in uh, it, for youth baseball. And so we watched them. So I knew all those guys too. So when we all went there, all of a sudden sports was like our thing. Everyone knew sports. And I had a big group of friends. I mean, I'm talking 20 deep of like 20 deep of just – of dudes I dudes I know to this day that I talked to during this day that hit me up when the pandemic started. Yo, I own a restaurant. It's called the Rooster in the Till. Hit me. Can you help me out? Help my business out. I'm doing takeout. Dudes I know. I mean, I, like my best friends for the rest of my life are all those guys. Ninth grade, tight as fuck. They half of them go on to public school, and half of us stay there, and we just merged. We took our group became bigger. And we took over all these dudes that went to public school. We became best friends with their new friends. And so all of a sudden, you're looking at a group of, of dudes who to this day know each other very intimately. Like, I mean. That's great. Um, and uh, You and, don't hear that a lot. No, I got to face. I like, cause, well, because it's also Tampa is a weird fucking place. Like, you know, I don't know. It's not, I don't think people understand how fucked up Florida is. Is that like the shit we did. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's just a weird fucking place. And so we all stayed. And then, and then, and then it doesn't hurt that, you know, the majority of Florida kids go to Florida State, Florida. So Florida State, Florida is where we went. And then we just all keep hanging out. I mean, one of the, one of my best friends that I grew up with produces my specials. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, no produces shit. all my specials. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so, uh, but I think, I think in high school, I learned, I learned that freshman year when I didn't have sports that I, had to have some sort of currency to like get people to like me, and that's when I I found humor, because and and by the way, definitely where I learned how to tell a story because I remember practicing stories from Mr. Mercandante's class to the lunchroom, like right running it and going like, you'd be telling these kids in be, the lunchroom, be, yeah, and I'd be running it on the walk and being like, okay, um, I came is like we're gonna do this beer run. I'm like I don't want to fucking do a beer run. And he's like. Don't worry, be fine. So he runs in all of a sudden. We're all sitting there, and then all of a sudden he comes out. We're like, oh, it's fine. He's like, dog, you know, or like, and so you, you'd practice your story in a weird way, and then you sit at the lunch table and you had to earn your spot at the lunch table. And, 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 and I'll, t- I mean, I look, I don't, I, I like talking in absolutes, and I know this, this is not, you can't do that, but Cuban kids tell the best fucking stories. Like, just because they're fucking, I remember dudes like their hands gestures, like, oh, fuck. This fucking Joey Diaz. guy, dude. Imagine yeah. him being not in your it's, high school. It's like it's like growing up with a bunch of Joey Diaz's. Mm-hmm. Bunch of Joey Diaz's is and every and so you I don't know, you kind of learn I don't know, you learn how that that works. And I was funny in high school, but I was also pretty like still the serious side of like trying to get pussy, trying to play sports. All right, how old were you when you lost your virginity? It's an interesting story. I'm talking about that in my special right now. Are you? Yeah. Do you mind? No, no mind okay. at all. Seventeen years old. Seventeen, 17. years old. And man, I was in a rush to lose this fucking thing. Why? Were you like the last of your group? No, Fifteen years old, sit at the lunch table, and they tell us the story of the of of uh, a dude who had already fucked, and and we knew him. And I was like, oh my God, that's gotta be fucking amazing. Yeah. And then and then my friends started falling off. Like they'd be like, I lost my Virginia last night. Fuck, shut the fuck up. It was, it was freshman year. I dated a chick and I pressured her. Like, I mean, like, like on the phone, we should do it. We should fucking do it. And she was like, I'm not ready. And I was like, oh. and then we broke up. And then I dated another chick, and it almost happened with her, and it didn't. 
And then I did other chicks, and it just and, and then I didn't have like a girlfriend. I didn't like I I, I was someone who was like gonna wanted to be dating the chick. I thought that was cool. And then a, and then and then I and then I dated a chick. And how was, was she? She was seventeen, but she was she was like two weeks older than me. Okay, she was a year older was she than at me at school. Your same school? No, no, girls' school. Year older. I always thought it was always so hot if I dated a girl that wasn't at my high school. Dude. I always felt like a baller. I'm like, oh, I'm dating a girl from South Carol, motherfucker. We will never, <laughs> we will never get back that feeling. No, that feeling of 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 the girls' school shows up at, when you're at practice and you see the talent walk out and you're just like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> and just going like, what the fuck? And everyone being interested in the same fucking person and then watching who lands it like it was it was insane but yeah i i uh i, I mean I, i've told the story before but i will definitely tell you i was not good my first time no one is anybody that says they are is bullshit i bet i'm worse than that person <laughs> i bet <What> happens? <laughs> so, so me and my buddy jeff hartley uh get our girlfriends at the time we go to one girl's dad had like a, a crash pad, right? Clearly, guys, guys getting pussy on the side. He had a crash pad in Carrollwood. So we go, go to, we go to her dad's house. He's out of town. He's in Mexico or whatever. We go to her dad's house. We get Pet Cemetery and a case of Natty Light and, uh, and, and two condoms. I, I immediately, my chick's like, hey, and we were dating. We were dating and, and, uh, she was, the fucking coolest chick. She introduced me to the B-52s. Like, there's so much about this chick that's awesome about this chick. And uh, and and I hate that I'm sharing this because if she ever hears this, she's going to be like, she's going to be like, ugh, it, it, I, I feel so sad for him. <laughs> so we go in. We go in. I, 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 uh, I get her in the bed. We make out or whatever. And then I, and then immediately I realize it's going to happen. I, I'm taking her clothes off. And I'm like, all right, this is going to happen. I dropped my my feet. I'm, by the way, I have, I have, a, I have a, a baseball jacket. They were like a pullover jacket with a collar with a zipper right here yeah. with your name embroidered mm -hmm. here. I have a baseball jacket on a hat. I have shoes on. I have uh, I have my jeans on. I pull my jeans down to my ankles, and I'm ready to go. That's how naked I'm willing to get. And I, take, I take a condom out. I take it out. I unroll it. Let me ask you this. Prior to this, had you ever put a condom on your dick? Never. Exactly. Never. Why would you ever put a condom exactly. on? Exactly. I never practiced. I think it was Santino and I had talked about this because all this awkwardness that goes into this moment, you don't even think like, oh, fuck. If I, I what, How's this go? It gets all sticky on your fingers. It fucking stinks. You're like, well, I don't even know. I don't know. Oh, what it smells do. like shit. Yeah. I, I have tactile issues. I've always, been, I've always had a problem with balloons. <laughs> so the second I smell it, Shut the, the second I smell it, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Like I'm fucking, it's a nightmare. So I take it, I look at I it. I never heard anybody say I've always had a problem with balloons. Ever since I was a kid, I've always had a problem with balloons. The smell of them, the feel of them, the the fucking fact that they're unpredictable, they can pop at any moment. <laughs> they're like, unpredictable. I fucking hate balloons. I fucking hate balloons. I've hated balloons my whole fucking life. My whole fucking life, I hated balloons. And now I'm fucking 17 years old, and I got to pull a balloon on my dick to do the thing. I'm, and I'm like. Yeah. Ugh. I remember the smell of it bothered me so much. It stinks so, so, so much. Oh, I remember thinking, what kind of fucking animal wears a condom? I'd rather get AIDS than wear a fucking condom. Like, and AIDS was like, I was like, I was like, in my head, I was like, she probably has AIDS because I thought everyone had AIDS back then. Um, Tom and I talk about this. Like, our fathers, they, they never wore condoms. They go get a fucking shot of penicillin or, <laughs> oh. or stick it out or walk it off. They never got condoms. My fear, my That's fear at our the time, generation. My fear condoms. at that time was AIDS, right? Magic Johnson's like, got AIDS. We can all get AIDS. I'm going to get AIDS, right? Yeah. I, that's all I thought about was AIDS. All I thought about was AIDS. So I. I take the condom, I see it, it's rolled up, and then I'm like, oh, my mom rolls my socks up. Okay, so I unroll the condom. I unroll it all the way, and I'm like, that's four inches of dick I don't need. <laughs> so, so I roll it back up four inches, and I'm like, there we go. That's more suitable for me. So wait, you unrolled it and thinking I got to put my dick in it then. Like a sock. Sure. You're like going to slide your dick in the unrolled thing. Yeah, you unroll it, and then you slide right. your dick in You're not like going to put it at the tip of the hard one and then roll it down. I remember them explaining condoms. At, at, at some time, you'd hear someone explain condoms, not a, a Jesuit. A Jesuit, they th they showed you in freshman year a third trimester abortion in religion class. Abortion? On 
a TV. Oh, they showed you God. a third trimester Why? abortion. So Who's would, filming that? So that you wouldn't have sex. And if you did have sex and you had a baby, you would not kill it. I'm talking third trimester is where they break it apart and pull it out piece by piece. Oh, no. That is, you saw that? Do you want to talk about a pivot? You put a fucking film up of a chick getting in stirrups naked, and everyone's like, whoa, we're seeing pussy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like, that's an arm. <laughs> Fuck, that's an arm. Oh, oh shit, that's a leg. Oh, that's a human. They're pulling out a human? It was fucking rough, dude. This school would be shut down today. That's Third cool. trimester shut abortion. Down. And I know <laughs> there's people that go burp blow stories out of abortion. This is not. I'll fucking call someone right now. Third trimester abortion in religion oh class. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so so that's why I was just like, I don't want to get someone pregnant. Or I, I don't want to get AIDS. I don't want to get someone pregnant. But I don't think I had realized the – anyway, we get back to the condom. I, I, slide, I go to slide it over, and as I push down, it fills up with air. And I'm like, huh, because there's air trapped in there. And I'm like, oh, push harder. As I go to push harder and use here, like either like a, <laughs> or I'm trying to squeeze the air out and it's just ballooning up. Like I'm making balloon animals on the fucking corner of a bed. I'm fucking shaking. It's cold. Okay. It's like December, November. I'm trying to get this condom on and I'm just like, motherfucker. Like I'm not even good at this. Like I'm bad at this. I should have stopped right there and said, Tonight's not tonight. I should have known. And I do that. I, since then, I've had uh, in my life, I realize if you start to tell a story and, and someone cuts you off in the middle of the story and you're at a dinner party, a story wasn't meant to be told. You got to find the momentum of life. And if it and if it stops you at a certain point, you got to take those as signs. I get out, I, I throw the condom away. I get up. I put my pants on. I go, I'll be right back. I left something in the other room. Go over to Hartley. I was like, hey, I need, I need your condom. He was like, you're already done? And I was like, no, I haven't even started. He was like, what happened to yours? I was like, it's broken. Just give me yours. Gives me the condom. I go back in. Now, now I remember hearing pinch the reservoir tip. I remember hearing mm -hmm. things like that and just blowing past it. Like if someone told you how to change a tire and then and you just were like, no, no, I, I, I know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And then you go to change the tire. You're like, yeah, what is the, what is the jack? Like, oh, that's the jack. <laughs> so I pinch the reservoir tip. I slide it over. My dick, and I remember putting it on. I was like, "That felt pretty good." Again, I get. Go ahead. Did you have it on the right way first? Or? I had it on the right way. Okay, because you know you put it on the wrong way before you start rolling. You're like, you're, like, Fuck, you're going you under like unroll, this. You gotta unroll it and then flip it around. It. I go. I get on top of her. <laughs> maybe do a couple kisses or whatever before. Had she lost her virginity already? Are you both virgins? No, she's not a virgin. Okay. She's not a virgin. So you got a veteran. And so, and I apologize if she's listening to this going like, wait, how do you know? I was like, eh, just... We're going around. <laughs> Part of the draw. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I needed to get rid yeah, of Yeah, you ever seen the movie There Will Be Blood? I was yeah. tired of drill, <laughs> drilling in holes and nothing showed up. <laughs> I was like, give me a fucking plot that you know has oil on it. I'm ready for oil, brother. There are all these gimmicks that promise a great night's sleep. And I don't care what kind of toppers there are or how heavy a blanket is. It's lipstick on a pig. If you are sleeping on a terrible mattress, your sleep will be terrible. It's that simple. That's why I recommend sleeping on a purple mattress. That's because only purple mattresses have the gel flex grid. It's a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. Unlike memory foam, which remembers everything. Thanks to the gel flex grid, purple mattresses bounce back as you move and shift. And you'll never have that I'm stuck feeling people get with memory foam. All right. Kirsten and her husband here have one. I've got one. Uh, I love it. I sleep on it all the time in my daughter's room. Try your purple mattress risk-free with free shipping and returns, and financing is available too. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash honeydew and use code honeydew. For a limited time, you can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash honeydew, code honeydew for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash honeydew, promo code honeydew, terms apply. The new year is here, and there's no better way to kick off 2022 than by making sure you're feeling like your best self. 
One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone, and they have incredible hydration flavors like watermelon, lemon lime, strawberry, pina colada, and more. You guys know I love liquid IV. They wouldn't be here if we didn't love them, didn't use them. We got them for at the office. We got them for all the guests to come in. I use mine at home every day. Take one every day on walks, take it to the gym, making sure I'm getting my hydration. What makes Liquid IV so effective? The science of cellular transport technology. That's that CTT, y'all. Designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. Liquid IV is on a mission to change the world, and they have donated over 19 million servings globally. Grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDEW at checkout. That's 25% off of anything you order when you use promo code HONEYDEW at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code HONEYDEW. Now, let's get back to the do. Uh, so, uh, So I get on top of her and this is probably real time. I get on top of her, arms trembling. I remember the second I went in, I went, that felt phenomenal. Mind you, that's with a condom. With a condom, I remember going, whew. On the pullout, it's over. Done. Done. I look at her, because I was like, we both, I just had an orgasm, we both had orgasms. I guess that's how that works. And she looks confused. And I'm like, huh? She goes, um, are you going to put it in? I looked down, my dick's between her butt cheek in the bed. I didn't even put it in her. Nah. I, fu- I didn't even fuck a person. That's what made you. I didn't even fuck a person. Didn't fuck. I didn't even need her there. You're still a virgin. Yeah, I'm still a virgin. I don't I'm even fucking need done. her there. I've had said. an orgasm and. You could have bared back that the whole time. I could have grabbed a pillow in my hand and been fucking just as. as... <laughs> that is. Cr- are you, what do you say to that? You try to cover. You, how do you cover that up? You don't cover that up. Uh-uh. No, no, tonight, you do. You do. You do. Happen. No, you do. You do. <laughs> how do you do that? I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel. I. I'll tell you. You just push on. You push forward, and you have sex with a condom that's been compromised, and then well, your dick. Well, you're young. You, enough, yeah, your, your dick. dick you're still. Right yeah, I think okay. I had another orgasm. I was like fucking whatever. Like by the, when I, by the way, the once I got to the fucking real deal, once I sat in the Cadillac, I was like, oh, okay, this is totally different than a Pontiac. <laughs> this is oh, this is different than a butt cheek in a bed. Well, this is even better. Like I think the next one was like that too. And but then but then it's a mess down there because it's been sloshing, and, and I'm like, oh, I got her fucking pregnant. I know I got her pregnant. I remember very vividly. <laughs> There's so much that I'm leaving out of this as an adult, because I don't want to have to relive these moments on the internet for the rest of my life. But suffice to say, this is for the young boy that's listening to this that had a n- nightmare of an experience that's like, I'm fucking, I fucked it up. I'm not good at sex. I'm never going to, I'm like, it gets better. It gets a lot better. I remember going into that bathroom. It was a guest bathroom. It wasn't a Jack and Jill bathroom. It was a guest bathroom. It wasn't attached to the bedroom. Looking in the mirror and going, what the fuck did you just do? Like going like, like I thought you were someone. Like looking at yourself going, I thought you were someone else. <laughs> I thought you I thought you would have killed that and look at you. Just fucking look at you. You're pathetic. But, but I lost my virginity. And I was like, that's all that I can't matter about. Yeah. Well, the second, oh, the second, second time. time. Yeah, second, second time. time. Second and so time. I lost my virginity. I fucking got in the car, turned it on. I dropped her off, gave her a kiss. Was like, I'm cool as fuck, cool as fuck, cool as fuck. Got in the car, turned on the music. The song Colors came on, and I was at Colors. 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 I am a nightmare walk. Pulled onto the 275, listened to Colors, pumping my hand through a fucking sunroof going, I fucking did it! Laid in bed that night. The sunroof of what? What are you driving home? My mom's car. BMW is one of the fucking coolest BMWs ever. It's a nice ride. It's the old school where it's sloped down in the front and the back. Old school is a fucking diesel, too. So we just... Get home, lay in bed that night, and... My brain starts. Now, I always had problems with anxiety, but my brain starts, and it just gets away from me. And I mean, the way an anxiety attack works for anyone, within a matter, I'll give it 30 minutes. Within a matter of 30 minutes, I am a fucking mess. I'm like, I guarantee you I got a pregnant. I probably have AIDS. I'm like. So you're worried about AIDS? You're not worried about kids? Or are you worried about everything? Yeah, I'm worried about kids, but, but. I realize that I have invited this into my life. That I, I know for I know one thing for certain. I was not ready to have sex, 
because I am not ready for the responsibilities of, of full blown AIDS and, and a family and a family and a family and a family. Like, but it's like so acutely on paper for me. Like you do, you, you have a fucking baseball game against town and country or against, against Tampa Catholic next week. What the fuck are you going to do when you get her pregnant? How are you going to tell your parents? Are they going to let you play? You're, you got accepted. Uh, I was in junior, but like you want to go to Florida State. You're not going to go to college. You're not going to have a life. You're not going to all these things start fucking becoming like, like if I, if, if, if you, if you think that, uh, was it rose glasses, rose colored glasses, everything looks better on with rose colored mm-hmm. glasses. If, if I was looking out uh, at losing my virginity with rose colored glasses, the second I fucked her, it, the rose colored glasses went away, and it was like it was like you have no life. You're growing up. You're gonna get a job. Where's that anxiety come from? You said you always have. Where's that anxiety come from? I I gotta be honest with you, and this is gonna sound fucking horrible, but I think growing up in Florida. But what was is there a time period you remember? You know that that something happened where you were like. You know, and then it's that laundry list of all the future tripping is what it's called. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I think I don't know. I wish I had a. Re- I wish I could do the deep dive so because I know that's part of the recovery of anxiety is finding the thing that gave you the. Are your parents like that? You, my dad is. My dad you learn from watching too. You see, and your dad goes. He's he's meticulous in that way and worries about everything. Worries about everything, but but also doesn't in a weird way. Like, but he definitely. My dad is a catastrophe thinker. Like okay. he sees three steps ahead of the problem before the problem started or that you've even started. I remember one time we went to uh, Costco, Co- Cost Plus, me and my wife, and we bought a an ottoman to put blankets in. And, and we had just had Isla and Georgia were walking and they were talking a little bit. And we brought it home and my dad goes, what the fuck are you, did you buy that for? And I said, for blankets. And he goes, no, you're fucking moron kids are going to put each other in there and they're going to suffocate each other and they're going to die. And I went, it's for blankets. And he goes, no, 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 no. Trust me, your fucking moron kids are gonna do do an escape act. Put them in there. They won't be able to get them out. They're gonna suffocate and die when you're not looking. And I went, Dad. And as he said that, Georgia is standing on the ottoman. She goes, guess where baby Isla is? And I'm like, uh huh. And she's in the, in the store, fucking ottoman. In she's the in the. No, this is in the, this is in our house. We'd already <laughs> bought it. You already did that. I was like, fill it with blankets <laughs> now. <laughs> fill it with blankets. Tape it up. <laughs> Tape. So yeah, I I. I uh, my dad's a catastrophe thinker, but I don't remember him having anxiety as a kid. But that spiraling that happened, that was like the first. I remember she came to take me to um, Outback Steakhouse. If she ever listens to this, she's going to go. She, this is going to be like like uh, when a serial killer writes a book and he's like, <laughs> yeah, and, he's like and he goes, and he goes uh, I was going to kill my next door neighbor, but she gave me an apple one day. Yeah. And they're going to be like, I don't even I remember giving him an apple, but I didn't know I was going to die that day. Right. She, we went to go to Outback Steakhouse, um, and I, it was the first time I ever had a Bloomin' Onion. And it was the first time I was ever acutely aware of someone's perfume because she wore the same yeah. perfume that she had worn. Yes, yeah, it Colors by Benetton. Colors is Colors. How about that? Uh, well, colors. Well, well, colors. Yeah, yeah, right. No, like, I know. Fitting. <laughs> it comes back in the <laughs> She showed up in colors, and she went and gave <laughs> gave me a hug, and I smelled the perfume, and it reminded me of the night I lost my virginity, and I went into the bathroom, and I threw up. You threw up? I threw up in the bathroom, and I've never been a guy that throws up. I've never been a guy that throws up. Um, like, I don't throw up very easily. And I you went, went right to the restroom and I went, threw up. Why? Really, I it triggered you that it way? It triggered me, and my panic started Was back. Was it the smell of the condom? It was the smell, smell? The, the smell of the colors. I, if I smell it, I get physically fucking ill. Because I remember that night of a failure of losing my virginity, that fucking catastrophe of losing my virginity, and all the anxiety that followed. I mean, Ryan, I, my anxiety was so bad about it that, like, I I remember telling my mom, I need you to know I lost my virginity. Like, I lost, I lost my virginity, and I, and I, and I'm really nervous. I can tell you where we were. I mean, I can tell you where we were in the car. I remember everything about mine. Like, I remember, like, I remember being in the car with my mom, and she was like, I knew something was going oh, on. Oh, I see, I see. She goes, I remember, I knew something was going on. I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, you've been acting off. The first anxiety attack I had, I wonder if, the first, like, full-blown panic attack from smoking weed was probably before then. Okay. But but, but this, I mean, I couldn't tether the two, because they're, they're different anxiety attacks, but the fucking, the, once you lose control of it, and it starts going, and all these thoughts that you'd never thought of, they become real, and they become real, and you go, and by the way, that it's it's that's haunted me my whole adult life. I mean, from that point, 
I, I mean, till t- 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 I mean, it hasn't happened in a little while, but it happened. Like, uh, like perfect example. I, uh, you know, I got doxxed, right? And so mm-hmm. I get a new phone number, and then no one's got my phone number. And then Howie Mandel comes over, and he tells, he starts talking about anxiety and OCD and stuff, and I and I and I deal with that shit. And I go, I go. I remember thinking, I haven't dealt with this in a while. I wonder if this is going to trigger anything. And then random as fuck, someone calls on my on my old number. It shows up on my computer on FaceTime. And he goes, what's that noise in the other room? I go, oh, so I got doxxed. It's people calling my number. And he goes, people just call your fucking number? And I go, yeah. And he's like, uh, he was like, what do they want? And I was like, I don't know. They fucking just want to talk. And he goes, go get it. And so I go to get it, but the call's already ended. Mm-hmm. How he goes, call him back. And I go, okay. So I call him back and we do a little prank. What I get when we get done, the we call the guy. The guy's like, who the fuck is he's Now he's looking at Howie Mandel. It's right, funny. Right, yeah, we put yeah, on the yeah. podcast. Get done. And I realized that as I FaceTimed him, when I FaceTime them, it comes from my new oh, number. Oh, shit. So I just, I'm, this is the first person I've given my new number to. So I'm like, motherfucker. So I, I, I DM him. I say, hey. I, I, I'm looking through now text messages from my old number, trying to find his number, and I see one from another guy, and I'm and it's this guy that's a bit drama going on in comedy I'm, that I'm attached to, and I'm like, oh fuck, I should call, I reply to him. I reply to him. I reply to the old guy from my new number. I reply to him course, with the drama dude. going on in comedy that I'm involved with, <laughs> and then I'm like, motherfucker. Then I go to reply to the guy, well, the and I say to a new guy, number I, got, I know I sent my number out twice, <laughs> and man, my spiral started. It started because the the you know when when you, you when you get doxxed, there's a lot of really cool people that reach out to you. They do they do they text you. They I'm a fan. They Facetime me. Two guys Facetime me this morning. They had just gotten to work. Uh, they were fucking in the orange vests in a fucking factory, and they were like, "Fuck!" He answered, and then they texted. You just made our day. That's great. You also get the absolute tremendous pieces of shit, who for whatever reason they're broken and they just. They say really nasty, harassing things about you, like where you just go, like, I don't need that in my life. And now, I mean, I don't go on, like, t- for Twitter, I don't have Twitter on my phone. I have it on, um, have it on, uh, Saf- if I want to use it, I can go to Safari. It's just to send stuff out because it's so small when you pull it up on my phone on Safari, it's too small for me to read because I don't have my glasses and I'm a dyslexic. Like, look how small this is. Like you can't ever read that, right? So oh, I so no. I can't read what anyone says. So it's really fucking perfect, right? So I don't know what they say anyway. So I, like I'm like, I can't see that. So I'm like, fuck it. I just put information out, and then every now and again on my computer. But like, for them to have access to my pocket where they can, where it's a text, and you think it's a friend, and it's like you're exactly what you th- we thought you were a fucking celebrity hungry whore. All you care about is being famous, or and like stuff like we're kind of accurate, you know. <laughs> No, but it's like, but it's like, it's like, it's like people put that and then you're like, you're like, and then it kind of fucks your day up. And if, and especially if you're in a soft place, it can sting. So I was like, I get it rid of my number. And then when that Howie Mandel thing happened and, and then I sent the, my number like three different people with the wrong messages to the wrong people, dude, it started a spiral that was like fucking rough to peel out of. And I was like, and I'm not working that weekend. Right. So like all this shit builds up. But the most specific I remember is losing my virginity, losing my virginity. And, and it's. Part of the reason. Can I ask you this really sure. quick? Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt, but no, I'm, you've never looked at it like you failed, but then you rallied and you got yourself back up. And even in those circumstances, you still were able to pull through and, and deliver. No, you've I never a, looked at it like that. No, no, no. I have a weird perfectionist thing. I don't know. If it's, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's OCD or it's, if it's work ethic or whatever, or like the way I work. Gary V says perfection is just another form of procrastination. Oof. Won't won't do it till it's perfect. Won't do it till it's oh, no, it no, off, no 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 that's not that's off, not or mine. whatever yeah that's is. not mine. So like uh, Priscilla, our old dog, mm-hmm. or, or passed away. She had uh, knee problems, and I had a really hard time accepting her having knee problems. I don't know. I wanted perfection. I didn't want Georgia when she was a baby. Preschool, she fell and then she cut her chin. And it's going to, whatever, is you can uh, interpret whatever I'm saying as whatever you want it to be. I know that's how the internet works. You need to interpret it as honesty because I'm, I'm sharing how my brain works. Mm-hmm. She had a cut. Uh, 
on her on her chin that was pretty bad. It was pretty aggressive. And they were like, yeah, she's going to have a scar, a pretty bad scar there. And I would not accept that. I would not accept my baby girl to have a, an aggressive scar on her chin. I just would not. I That, the way I'm saying it right now, just, it fucked me. It fucked with me. So every night and every morning, I would put Moderma on it. And I'd put a Band-Aid on her chin before she went to school. And I'd tell her, baby, if you don't keep a Band-Aid on, it's going to scar pretty bad because the sun will hit it and you're outside. So do the best you can to keep the Band-Aid on. So it's not a big deal if the Band-Aid falls off, but the more you have it on, the better it is. I was obsessive with this Moderma. I mean, I mean, every night I put Moderma and I'd rub it in. I'd really make sure it got rubbed in. Kid has no scar on her chin. Wow. No scar. You can't see it. I mean, I was so Scars funny. from the kid's bullying her with the Band-Aid on the chin. Yeah. But. <laughs> From there going, hey, Frank, <laughs> hey, Nelly, get over here. <laughs> and you found a St. lunatic. <laughs> the, I mean. Yeah, what well, a scar's going to be gone. <laughs> it's, and what's so funny is now if I if I look for that scar, you can see like a remnant. like a little white But line. nobody who knew. Or nobody would know, ever never, see it. Yeah. But I see it and I go, I remember. I remember I remember very fondly. Take, that's how I took care of my daughter. It was like, uh, you're not going to have a scar. But, but I'm also like that with like. Uh, with my my body of like of like I remember one time taking a shit and I saw stretch marks on my thighs and I was like what the fuck and my heart sank and I was like it's over it's over it's over it's over it's over what's over I was perfect you're modeling I was your perfect hair. I was perfect until now I remember I remember I remember Netflix <laughs> Netflix put my stomach on the on the billboard uh-huh. and I go that's not me. And they're like, I'm, I have a distorted vision of what I am or what. Sure, or, sure. But, um, but yeah, I'm a weird perfectionist. When Priscilla got her knee surgery, <sighs> I learned a lot from that dog because when she first got her knee surgery, I was like, so what do we just, I mean, I'm like writing it off. So we have a gimp dog that can't run. You can't play with it. You can't give it love. What you don't realize is that, and this is what Priscilla taught me, and I did not learn it before then, was that things just change a little bit and then things are new. And you accept, you learn to live with the new things. And then that's your newness. And then, and then, and and then all of a sudden it becomes, it becomes just as good as the first thing you had. Like, and, and I, I didn't, I, it took me a very long time to learn that. I mean, like I have a scar on my foot today that if I see it, it I feel a deep sadness. From what? Way, I'm such a fucked up person. I'm mm-hmm. about to tell you something. You're going to look at me and think I'm fucking out of my mind. I've had perfect feet my entire life. <laughs> I love the like way this perfect, starts. Perfect feet. Perfect arches. Your toes are symmetrical. Beautiful arches. When, actually, when people see my feet, they go, those are dancers' arches. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even joking. By the way, I have beautiful eyes. I have beautiful feet. I mean, like, like I, your beautiful burp. I mean, when people see my feet, they go, God damn it, those are good-looking feet. <laughs> I, and I take pride in my feet. My feet are always tanned. No like, one's ever said Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I take care of my toes. Tan your feet. I, t- my I tan feet my feet. I, I'll take I got time. a pedicure two days ago with my daughter. Yeah. Do you go? I'll take oh, – I, oh, I used to go with my girls. God. I haven't gone since the pandemic. But what I – I mean, I'll take some morning time in the morning to do my gratitudes, work, write in my happiness journal, and, and I'll keep my feet out st- like this, like legs together, like I'm on a scooter, so that the sun hits my feet right, so that when I wear my flip-flops, people go, God damn, you got nice feet. I fucking was drunk at a Super Bowl and I cut my foot really bad one time. To the day, to this day, if I see that scar, I, I can see it. No one else can see it, but I see it. And I just go, and I just go. It. No, it was before I it was before Georgia oh, got hers. Okay. And I go, God damn it, man. I had the best feet in town. In town. I had the best I mean, I have I have I have legit great feet. Like I've like go online. There's fucking websites <laughs> dedicated to my feet. I'm not even fucking around. Google Burke Reiser's feet, it comes up. It's on like wickedfeet.com. I have great fucking feet. I believe. It. And I know people with bad feet. Like fucking, you ever I see have someone? terrible feet. Oh, I have great fucking feet. I have like, high arches and my toes are not, like the first three are good and the last two are much shorter than the first three. I mean, what's great, maybe I'm, I'm also have a little bit of a foot fetish. So like, like I'm in, I'm into feet. Like I, I watch, uh, my feet are killing me. <laughs> you, you pull, oh, I thought you pulled up no. that. No, but, uh, but so like there was a weird thing with perfection and, 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 uh, and like, and like, especially with girls, I had a really hard time accepting a flaw in a girl. If I saw a flaw, I couldn't get past it. Um, like what? Buck like teeth c- cellulite. Or... Oh, cellulite. Cellulite. Right. Like you'd see like, a, and by the way, now it's like, I mean, I'm married to a woman for 20 years. Like now I, I 
fucking love it. I love a little bit of a flaw in a woman. But I had to learn to get there. And Leanne was the one that taught me how to get there. Leanne just was like, was like, this is what I look like. Like this is and and Leanne just is just doesn't give a fuck about anything. No plastic surgery. She's like, she finds it. She finds strength in aging because she goes, this is what you're supposed to look like. Amen to that. I really believe that if most people left plastic surgery alone and let aged just as they would, that on the other side of that plastic surgery window, they would look better in their 60s, even 70s I, if they make I, it without that fucking Frankenstein 60s, shit. 70s, yes. But there's a fucking window of 50s where you, you can stretch it for a little. Like I have a, I have a buddy, a good friend. Um, whose wife got plastic surgery, and she looks fucking phenomenal. I've said it to her, like, fuck, every time I see her, I go, you look better than last time. <laughs> Jesus Is Christ. That a compliment or yeah. not? You look fucking amazing. All right, let me ask you this. I'm going to wrangle this back here. So we're going to skip Florida State because we know Florida State. Well, I think that what was interesting about – oh, go ahead. go. Say I don't mean skip it, but yeah. I want to know what happened. So you're in college. You do college. I, I know you graduate college. Yeah. And now you're out of college and you're getting into the world of comedy and everything else. But also you're becoming a parent and everything. So how do you balance this anxiety that's been coming with you? Because as we change, our anxieties change. Yeah. You know, now you've got a home and children and pets and all these things that you have to take care of. And that anxiety is not – it's not like, bye, Bert. It's just fucking like, okay, now I got some more shit to worry about and think about yeah. and – so how do you, because you are literally a comedian, a podcaster, a TV host. Uh, I mean, you do all these fucking things. So how do you balance the anxiety of each of these things with, you know, are my kids safe? Are my kids healthy? Is my family taken care of? I just, it sounds so funny. I, I just married Leanne. She doesn't, the right woman. She, doesn't, she doesn't see anxiety. She doesn't. She'll let you know when things are bad. She took a pilot. You know, yeah, like that's, she, that's interesting. Leanne, the way Leanne operates with everything is like, uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna feel a little bit of turbulence. It's not that bad. Trust me, I'll let you know if it gets bad. I'll ask you to put your seatbelts on. I'm gonna have the flight attendant sit down. You're like, but is it gonna be bad or not? And she, and but you, but the tone of her voice, you're just like, it's the way she operates. I mean, the, like, we've had a, a couple things that have been big in our family. You know, like ours um, that I didn't handle well. I never handle anything well. I don't. I just don't. And uh, Leanne kind of just writes, lets me spin out, and then writes my boat. I'm, I'm very candidly, I and I hope one day Georgia sees this and goes, like her and her, I hope she doesn't see the first part about me losing my virginity. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, uh, but like I, I've, I've dropped the ball a lot on Georgia. Like I, I, and it's that perfection thing. It's that, it's that, like, uh, like I. I don't want Priscilla to have any injuries. I don't want Georgia to have any flaws. I want her to be the perfect kid. I want her to – she is the perfect kid. She really is. Now I now I see that better. Like I – like – I mean, the, fir the first time I found out Georgia had lied to me, I was devastated. I mean, I was like – What'd she lie about? Can you talk about it? Don't, no, no I, it, was, uh, it was just uh, during the pandemic. The, I'm, I'm sure I've talked about this. I'm sure I've talked about it somewhere, but during the pandemic – they were going bike rides, and uh, and and it was just, and I thought that's all it was. Or anyone I talked to was like, <laughs> "Yeah, good luck," and I and I was like, "You're staying socially distant." Like I, I had rules in my head, and they weren't staying socially distant. They're fucking kids. They're going to a parking garage. They're hanging out. They're bullshitting. And I found out. Leanne found out first, and then I found out later. And 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 I just didn't handle it well. Like I didn't. I was like. I don't know. I just never thought that kid would lie to me. Like, but I lied to my parents all the time, right? And so, I, and so I, 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 and like, I remember, one, I remember one time she was like, uh, "I want to, I want to quit softball," and I was like, "That's not happening." When I was a kid, if your dad told you something wasn't happening, that was how that worked. Yeah, no shit. And she, <laughs> she just quit softball. <laughs> you, you told her, and she did it. I anyway. said, "You're not quitting softball. That will not happen." It was during the pandemic. They weren't even going to practice anyway. Mm -hmm. We just keep one another year on the team. Who gives a fuck? And she just is like a very strong-minded person who knows what she wants. It's a very great quality to have. Knows what she wants and does it her way. And was like, I, I, I love you. I respect you, but I'm going to do what I want to do. 
and I fucking melted down. Like I'm not good at that shit. I'm just not. And and uh and Leanne is the one who kind of allows me to melt down and then pulls me aside and is like, you're overreacting to this. And and then allows me to spiral out with her. And then in a couple days, makes me realize, uh, oh fuck, it's it's not as bad as I made it feel. She's like, yeah, yeah, she's a great fucking kid. I mean, the kid is the really the kid really is a phenomenal kid. She is doing nothing that I did in high school. Nothing. I mean, we're talking the shit I did in high school. Not none of that is happening. The amount of lies I told my parents. Oh God, is that kid I'll does bet. not do it. They doesn't do it. You you try to connect with her and she connects with you. Like I never connected with my fucking mom and dad. I never was like looking for a connect. I'm never, like no, I, that wasn't important then. Right. She's just yeah. a great fucking kid, and I just was way overbearing. And it was the pandemic. I'm sure we we're all a little bit out of our minds. My OCD was coming in with all that shit. But like, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Leanne's uh, the re- the way I deal with it is Leanne. It's fucking Leanne. Like Leanne is just. She just takes care of everything. I mean, everything. You know, when we put, we had to put Priscilla down, and I, I talk about this in my act right now. When we had to put Priscilla down, I remember thinking, thank God she raised these kids and I didn't. Like, thank God I was on the road. Because if I was, like, I was melting down when we had to do it. And Leanne had them processing emotion and being fucking adults and being like, and taking care of Priscilla and loving on her all night. Like, I just was drinking whiskey fucking mad, biting the inside of my lip going like, fucking goddamn fucking dog dealer i got this god de- like so like uh yeah it's leanne and and it's leanne leanne does all of it yeah so what now where you sit literally scares you the most what gives you the most anxiety what are you trying to fight death oh without a doubt death. really yeah death, death. What, are you 47 49 are you yeah i'm about to be 49 in march Really? I'm right there with you. Um, death. I wake up every morning thinking about death. I think you I, wake up every morning though. At least you get to think about death, bro. You ain't thinking about death. You're my fucking, fucking death. I love when you hear that. <laughs> I love when you hear that. I love a statement like that where you go, you wake up thinking about it. I think to myself one what day. What do you think about it? Uh, um, very, very, very. I'm sure you're specific with your thoughts. One day, I will be laying on a bed. Oh, hopefully, I guess. And I'll be looking at my family and and I will know I can't stop this. I can't change this, that it's happening. And then I'm going back to darkness. I don't know what's going to happen. And I can't change it. I mean, it fucks me up. I, mean, I think about it every morning when I wake up. I think, I think this is inevitable. This is inevitable. It is inevitable. It's not. It is like, 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 uh, like cancer culture. It's not that bad when you compare it to death. <laughs> like you go, you go. It's not. It's yeah. not. It's not inevitable. It's like nothing. You, yeah. To like death. Like I. I mean, I can change my act. I can write different stories. But yeah. I, I'm not personally because I'm. I'm a little bit oblivious to the to. I, I think everyone understands things are meant to be jokes that comes to my show, you know, and if, and, and if, if the that's the tax I have to pay is that people get upset by a joke I tell, that's fine. All my behaviors, I've had sex with six uh, women, so, like, my behaviors are, are pretty, uh, pretty fucking transparent. Um, I've said inappropriate shit on uh, all the time my whole life, but I'm also a comic, like— Also, when you're— 10 years, 11, whatever it is in the podcast, you've definitely said some oh, dumb yeah. shit. Oh, I, 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 We've recorded I, yeah. hours and hours, hours. Hours and hours of Rogan where I'm just yeah. high as fuck saying shit crazy. Yes. If that comes out, I, I, I want to say that the people that come to my shows will side with me and go, hey, man, like that's that's how I, I think is like if you're not hurting someone, if you're not doing something malicious to someone or or misrepresenting yourself in a certain way, I mean, everyone knows how fucking flawed I am. They've seen all the, the things I've said or whatever. So I, don't, so, but I don't really like. I don't like. I don't think about that because it, it isn't. It, it isn't inevitable. But what you're saying to death me is inevitable. Yeah. But what you're saying to me is in a bed surrounded by family. So do you see yourself older? Oh, yeah. how, how old your dad? Your dad's still alive. Your Seventy-two. Mom. And your you said your grand your par- grandparents lived to what? Like 90? ninety-nine. Uh, so yeah, a week a week before. Yeah. What's that? It's that Mickey. <laughs> it's that Mickey that Mantle, Mickey Mantle gene. gene, bro. It's that Mickey Mantle gene. Is like I believe in. It. It's like I get up every morning. I work out and and uh, like I worked out hard this morning. Four miles, a four mile run, and then lifted weights. I'll do the same thing. I woke up. At, so my thing now is like uh, you know, th- that's that Instagram stories. So I'm sitting in bed thinking about death, and I go, 
they're not going to get me today. Like, let's fucking get on Instagram stories. And you just do one story, and then all of a sudden, your day started, and you're out of that bed. Um, it, yeah, I, th- I think about – I've always thought about death. I think – I think now I think about it more because I start seeing it. Qu- I quantify it. I go, so, so 20 years doesn't seem like a lot. But 20 years, like 30 sounds, 30, I'd be 80. Like, what are the odds of making it to 80? And in then this bu- in this business, yeah, it's like, and then, and then you see, you hear stories of like some dude, 35 years old, eye cancer or whatever, I don't know, whatever, but like, my dad died at 42, and I, I try to – I'm four, about to be 49. I try to remember that and be like, I won. Yeah. My, 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 <laughs> yeah, my motherfucker ain't doing anything I was doing. My grandfather died – my grandfathers both died early of strokes. Um, so I got – but I got in front of that by getting a uh, cardiologist, mm-hmm. getting on blood pressure medicine, getting CT, CT scans, CT scans. All Me the too. work, all the work, I stress test. I do it. I do it every nine months. Okay, um, I do it twice a year. I do every year. Yeah, and so I do that. I do physicals once every mm-hmm. year. Um, I do. I'm, I'm I'm up with that. But you know, still, it's like I, I was with my cardiologist one day, and he was like, uh, "You still drinking?" I was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "You, you know, that's got to stop, right?" <laughs> he was like, "You know, that does. It only ends one way." Like, and then the other day, like my neighbor, our neighbor from our old house, she was like, "Oh." This woman partied, and I kind of got a kick out of it. She had a box of white wine and just fucking sit in the front and just. And then Leanne told me she was younger than my parents. And by the way, now she's having a rough time. They have to carry her with a belt, like it's. What do you mean like, a belt? Like they put a fucking weight fucking belt around her and make sure she can walk straight. No. She's, oh, it's dude, it's bad. That's terrible. And then you start going. Oh wait. Yeah, it's like, that's why I'm drinking <laughs> fucking sex. Fit Vine right now because because this shit doesn't have the tannins in it, doesn't have the sugar, so you're not hungover, so you can get up and do the work. Now, great, and you don't get as drunk. Sorry, Fit Vine. You don't get as drunk as you would, but that's all I want to do is have a f- couple glasses of wine yeah. with my buddy and have a conversation. And so, uh, so yeah, I, I I I think I think about I think about health consistently. I think about longevity. I think about uh, I think about like. Like just, I, I don't want to die. That's the number one thing. If, I don't want to die. If the drinking is smoking, let's say, how how are you going to stop when it's time? When that doctor says, because oh, it's, it's going to start. It's going to happen before then. No I, one's going. No one. No one will ever tell. Here's what'll you're happen. You're not gonna. You're no telling one, me that one. Your checkups are not going to tell you, Bert. No more. You're going to stop before they tell you. No one will tell me to quit drinking. That no meaning meaning meaning. Uh, You'll meaning, stop before someone has to alert you of your health. Is that what you're saying? So I've already made some. Uh, I mean. I've already made bigger leaps in in watching my drinking than I ever have in my life. My, but before, when we before we started sober October, I was drinking aggressively, and I was unaware. And this is gonna sound fucking crazy, but I was unaware that like day drinking catches up to you. Meaning, I couldn't understand why I'd I'd be so hungover on a Monday when I'd partied all through the weekend. And just and just rebounded, you know, rebounded every day. And then Monday, all of a sudden, my back hurt, and I'm like, I'm like, God damn it, man, I don't feel right. I feel off. I'm like, I'm sweating. And it smells like piss. And then, and then one day, I just, I just was like, Oh, that's 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 day drinking. That's like getting on a plane and flying and drinking all day. I was like, Okay, all right. And so I just was like, We have to adjust because one of the things I love is working out. And so a lot of it happened in Serbia when we were doing the movie. I kind of really adjusted the way I drank and was like, listen, man, if you want to open up a bottle of wine every night, that's fine because it's way better than what I was doing before, right? But but it stops at a bottle of wine. You're done at a bottle of wine. Uh, you got to work out in the morning. You got to drink water. You got to take vitamins. You got to like – There's it was all COVID stuff. Like I didn't drink – COVID started. I didn't drink the well, first three months of COVID. Is that right? Yeah, because I was like – I was like I was fucking terrified. Feel? Fucking great, but like, who cares? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Out of COVID, that all, all I remember is that first beer I had. I remember first beer I had. We were at the new house. We had to stop construction because of COVID, right? So we, I'm eating fucking money on this house. I hadn't drank in three months. We're over the new house. The dog Priscilla's alive. Dogs are in the backyard. Girls are still little girls. George and I hadn't gotten into a dust up yet. <laughs> I mean, they were still my little girls. Like we had bows and arrows set up. We had all these cool things. We get over there. They're like my little girls. Leanne comes over with a straight up German craft brew. Tall, you know the tall ones, the yeah. the ones that are like 
not, not 32 ounce, but like way more than just a regular can of beer. She goes, own a beer. You own a beer? And I was like, I've been, I'm not drinking. She goes, fuck it. Have a beer. I was like, for real? She goes, yeah, have a beer. Have a beer. And I, and I, I, <laughs> I went and I got two. I was like, I'm not going <laughs> to. I was like, because yeah. I want the buzz. I want to feel the. Yeah, I want to yeah. feel the beer buzz in the afternoon. Now, with the this sun is Burt Kreischer I'm talking to. So after three months of no alcohol, will two two of those beers will it give you a buzz? Kick me in the dick, really, and it makes the trees sparkle. <laughs> I mean, every time I quit drinking, that first drink is. I mean, I have I have beautiful thoughts about life. That first drink, that first drink. I remember the first sober October we did. I was sober for what thirty one days. Whatever. Yeah, I was gonna say, man, what is that like? It's I love it. I love it. It's great. It's, you feel fucking but I mean, awesome. That first drink after thirty. Well, it was only thirty. This is three months. You're saying? Yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah. So I we we um, is that the longest span of time you? COVID had? is the longest span of time because I had no work. In how many years? Three months and how many years? Since Russia. Russia's when it got bad. Russia's when it started. Yeah. Yeah, Russia's when I was like, oh, you can drink in the afternoon? And they're like, yeah, of course. And I was like, sweet, what happens? And they're like, just don't tell anybody. I was like, Don't real? tell anybody. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> ta-da, ta-da. <laughs> so I, uh, I remember when we did Sober October, there was this little girl. Uh, I won't say her name, but there was this little girl that used to come to our house when, we, when the girls were babe, young, and she would dance. And I was like, and by, by the way, she'd just start dancing. We'd be all watching a movie, and the kid would get up and start dancing. I remember saying to her dad, her dad's like a cool dude, right? I said, dude, what's up with your fucking kid? Like, she just dances. And he goes, I don't know, man. The kid just dances. She fucking, it's like all of a sudden she just gets this feeling, and she gets happy. And she, the only way can, she can express it is dancing. I, I can't explain it. I was like, well, whatever. I don't get it. Sober October ends. Me and Ari are in New Orleans. We're getting ready to do the Joker's Cruise. And uh, and me and Ari get cocktails down at the thing. And, and it doesn't taste good, but not enjoyable. It's at the Carousel Bar in New Orleans. And then we do a shot. And we get another, like a road cocktail. And as I step out of that, whatever rest hotel that is has a Carousel Bar, I get into the street. And my and and it's New Orleans. I mean, fucking one of the greatest cities in the goddamn yeah, fucking sure planet. Is. Everything's happening. Everything's there. Everyone's laughing. Everyone's cheering. Ari turns around smiling and he goes, "I love this." And my alcohol kicks in. And I feel my first buzz in a month. And now, mind you, I've been on a, a tear for a few years, and now I feel my first buzz in a month. And I realized why that little girl danced. I went, I'm, I started dancing. I was like, this feels so fucking good. I just want to dance. I know it. Like, yeah. this is what she felt. She right, but she's yeah. so pure when you're a kid. You're so pure that you feel as a kid that you just start dancing. And I go, oh, God damn it. I wanted to call her dad and be like, yo, put your daughter on the phone. I know why the fuck you dance. I get it. Like, and so, uh, so like, I, that's, I, that's, I've said it before. It's why I'll never, I'll never, I'll never quit drinking, but I'll never let my body get to the place where someone tells me I have to stop drinking because I don't want, because I really enjoy it. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like, <laughs> The reason I'll never – it's selfish. The reason I'll never cheat on Leanne, not because I give a fuck about her feelings. I don't. I don't. I mean, like, I don't. They're not my feelings. Like, yeah. I don't feel what she feels. But I, but I need her in my life. So I selfishly I, – I, I don't do things that everyone will want to do. Chick wants to fuck you after a show, and everyone wants to do that. Like, it's, it would be feel, – feel great. But I don't do it. I don't do it because I need that woman in my life because without that woman, I don't have a house. My kids are a fucking mess. I probably don't have a car payment. Like, I have no way of getting home today. Like, I mean, there's like, <laughs> like there's a fucking lot. Like, I couldn't do anything without that woman. So, like, everything I do is selfish. And so, when I work out, I don't like working out. Like, I hate it. I do it every fucking morning. I, I, I don't eat great. But when I eat good, it's so that I can eat like shit later. And get a fucking suitcase of White Castles at 2 in the morning. I'm the same way. I'm like, let me lose 10 pounds. Nah, fuck that. Let me lose 15 so I can fuck off for a couple Dude, weeks. Dude, I, I do crazy fucking diets to lose weight so I can go party. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't drink and work out so that I can drink and not work out. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm going back tonight. Tonight I'll, get, I'll open up another bottle of Fit Vine and get on the, and the treadmill. And I'll walk like seven miles and have a bottle of wine. It's my greatest I was like the fucking, and I go, hey, it just, I drink water like crazy. I don't, I don't enjoy it. 
That's why I love fucking Liquid Death. You just murder that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm no one like I don't know. I like Kool Aid. I like Kool Aid. But I drink it's water. So funny. That's what I grew up on. Kool Aid and Country Time lemonade. The have powder you, and the fucking jugs. Have you had Kool Aid at a soul food restaurant? No, I haven't. It's got to be the most it's, sugary it's, fucking shit. It's made the way it's supposed to be made. Yeah, like with someone's yeah. hand. <laughs> yes. It, I just had went to a soul food restaurant in New Mexico, and they fucking brought me Kool Aid as a joke. They were like, "We know who you are. Here's some Kool Aid." <laughs> if cum tasted like that Kool Aid, <laughs> I'd have bruised knees. I mean, <laughs> fuck off. Oh, shit. I will say this. I forgot this. I'm with Eva one night, and uh, this is probably, and her brother, this is right around Christmas time, and uh, I call Benny Han. I'm like, hey, you guys happen to be open by any chance? We're in. The, we're right down the street. He's like, we are open. I said, all right. So we go in, and we sit down, and the guy's looking at me and everything, and he comes up, and he sets a Kool-Aid down, and he goes, tell the machine we said hello. I said, that's fucking ridiculous. By the way, by the way, can I tell you all that I heard out of that story is, is this statement. Benny Hanna's never lost on me. If you, if, you are a terrible I'm a Benny Hanna guy. I'm a Benny Hanna guy. Hanna, I'm too. a terrible listener. All I heard was Benny Hanna, and all I thought <laughs> I was, you go. I could go to fucking Benny Hanna. <laughs> I love Benny Hanna. Anything with a little bit of razzle-dazzle, yep. and I am fucking all in. You I give like me a, a fishbowl drink, I love a fishbowl drink. I love a fishbowl drink more than I like a regular drink. If you serve water and fishbowls, I'd probably drink it better. Did I ever tell you about the time I drank our fishbowl water one time? What do you mean? Fucking Leanne is cleaning out her fucking the girl's fishbowl and she pours it in a pitcher of water. And I was like, oh, I can be hydrated. Here we go. And I drank the fish's <laughs> fishbowl just... water. I drank all of it. Oh, and she was laughing <laughs> oh, so God, fucking man. hard. She was like, ah, <laughs> I just see the ah, there was shit little in there. Shit. Like, I was, I was tall. I go, why would you save the fishbowl water? <laughs> why would you? Yeah, why? she was like she was uh, she was oh. uh, fucking pH balancing it. Oh, I drank the whole god. fucking thing. Oh god, that is disgusting. I'm gonna smoke weed tonight. I can feel it. I can feel it. I got. I'll Tommy. send you home with some. I'll I got, send you. Home no, I have so much in my fucking okay. house. Oh, send me home with one of the new joints I'll you got. Send you, I'll send you. What do you smoke? <laughs> Sativa, I like sativa. Period. I'm a thinker. I'm not a. That's what. That's what you want. It's not a brand for me. It's more of the the type of. Marijuana. I like a giggle. I love to giggle. Sativa, bro. So my favorite thing when I got sativa is a daytime high. They call indica couch lock. That's your nighttime that's high. Tongue. That's the stuff that's you want to smoke. And then you're like, you know what? Fuck all our plans. Lay down. That's not me. me. I'm like, let's fucking paint the walls. Let's put some pictures up over here. Let's paint. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's go clean some shit. Yeah. yeah. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A. I just want to giggle. And not think about, I don't want to fucking, I don't uh, want to. We got to get out of here. But let me, because yeah. you have shit to do. Let me ask you this question. I ask everybody their first time on here. Advice you would give to your 16-year-old self. After oh. what we've talked about right now, today. Christ. And it can be funny, it can be serious, whatever you want. What, what are you going to say to 16-year-old Burt Kreischer, knowing what you know now? Fucking slow down. <laughs> I would really, I would, I would say slow the fuck down, dude. Like, you're in a rush to get everything you don't know that you want. You don't need it. I mean, every part of my life, the fucking losing my virginity. Uh, f- I made I made decisions based on what people were making around me. And then even still, like, getting into comedy, I moved straight to New York. And then in comedy, I was like, I wanted everything everyone else had. Cause and I didn't deserve it. I and I but I didn't know it. And I was like, and I would uh, allow that to affect the way I felt about myself. Mm-hmm. And I would just say, slow the fuck down. I mean, slow the fuck down. I think that's great. I think it's great advice. Yeah, you always want. I, I've learned that too. One of the things that took me, I mean, well into my forties to learn is like, if you just fucking take your foot off the gas, shut your fucking mouth, and sit back, it most of the time it takes care of itself. The hardest thing to do is till Tom Petty said, man, the waiting's the hardest part. You just fucking get antsy. You're like, nah, I got to do something here. I got to do something. I don't. I didn't think I'd realize that it, I would be this happy at 49. Me either. Like, really. I thought about it today. Like, my dad, again, died at 42. And I'm like, shit didn't start happening for me until 47, 40, 46, 40, 40, 47. Uh, yeah, probably same here. Oh, my God. I could have died and never even hit my potential or, yeah. or started to hit my potential. Like, it dawned on I'm like, God. I think what about that. Fuck? I definitely think about that sometimes. I go, how many times I could have died or should have died. Mm-hmm. And every person on this planet is lucky to be make it past 16. The oh, dumb shit we all do as kids. Fuck. 
It's crazy. But, but it, like, I, if I, it, I wish there was a way I could go back and go like, hey, you're not going to turn into who you want to be until you're 49. Like, you're going to be a stuttering, low ego, ha- low self-esteem having cunt at parties. Like, shut the fuck up. Don't talk. Don't pitch everyone your fucking stupid ideas. Like, stop self fucking if i could go back to my 16 year old self and hear me talking at a party i would walk up and punch myself in the face and be like who is that adult that just came in here and punched ryan in the face like his future motherfucking self wouldn't that be cool like if you get to hang out with someone who has the like if they could pair you right and you could go this is what's wrong with me like a tinder right so you go on and you these are this is what i don't like about me i I fucking i have low self-esteem i end up by flaws yeah 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 and then and then they pair you with a guy a little bit younger than you like by five years ten years he has all your flaws and then you get to be friends with him he doesn't know why you're friends with him you just get to see the thing you don't like in you actualized that's at parties. really interesting and then you were like oh fuck that's what i sound like i think it's danish and o'neill i want to give them credit <sighs> if it is they had this idea i heard about a while ago and i've talked to them I'm, pro- I'm almost positive it's them but they they wrote this script where they time travel and they go back to their meet their 17 year old selves to tell them some shit that could change their whole lives in the future yeah but the time machine breaks and now they're stuck with their 17 year old selves and they fucking can't stand them and i think that is brilliant like could you imagine seriously being stuck for a month with 17 year old burke i could not so wait so you know i wrote a script about oh, <laughs> about my daughters time traveling from the future to come back to save leanne's life okay and, I, and they they come to Pat's, the local bar we used yeah, to hang yeah, out with, yeah. and they're like, uh, and they're like fucking super proud of themselves. I don't know who they are, and they're like, "What you drinking? Tito's soda, big glass, no lime." I said, "Yeah." And they're like, uh, "What'd you have for dinner? Breakfast tacos?" And I was like, "Do I know you guys?" And they're like, "It's Georgia and Isla." And I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "We saved mom's life." And I'm like, "We? What are you talking about? Like 25?" They're like, "Yeah, we time traveled. We saved mom's life." And I'm like, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> And I'm like, wait, are you guys scientists? And they're like, no, I'm a DJ. She's, I'm a, I'm, I'm DJ a manager. And a manager. She's my manager. And I go, wait, how it did goes you... right back to your yeah. talent show, yeah. bro? Gene Simmons yeah. and your phone. I go, wait, how did you guys? How did you guys time travel? And they're like, we got this calendar at this like gypsy stop, and uh, we can time travel. And I was like, what about the butterfly effect? And they're like, huh? I go, what? Like, did you change the future? And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're just the morons they are today, right? But they're just as dumb in the future. And they come back and they end up falling in love with them young their young selves and their young selves fall in love with them and they fuck up the entire future for everyone because <laughs> they go different. and grab them and take them out of school and go party with them for a day. Yeah. And I was like and it's so funny because I sent that script I told, I pitched it a couple places and then and then you know scripts just go away whatever. But uh but I love I'm obsessed with time travel. I think cuz I'm afraid of death. Yeah. Any more questions? Brother, just promote whatever you'd like to promote and we'll get out of here. Uh Here's what I'd like to promote. I've shared everything with you, okay? I'm looking at the camera right now. I've shared shared everything with you. Uh, You will see a very vulnerable side of me, I'm sure, in the future, in my movie, The Machine. (laughs) Because I'm going to promote it. I, I really want everyone to see it. And and I'm it supposed to. I don't know. I don't know. I will, but I but I I will I will be going hard in the paint promoting this thing. It's the, Come back it's, and promote. I, it. You get one shot in life at something like this. I'm going to be going out hard as fuck to promote this thing. Okay, that's the and I know podcast fans are are like, dude, enough. We get it. Like you guys are so inside baseball. All I ask is that you help me promote it. That if you see a, a trailer for it, you retweet it. You, you talk kindly of it. You go out and see it. Uh, and just be cool. I hope you enjoy it. Like, I, 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 it's great. I love it. You got Luke Skywalker. You're I know. It's it's great. Sake. But, like, but I know podcast fans are discerning motherfuckers. Like, I know because I'm one. And I fucking catch myself talking shit about people. But still, they're also die hour motherfuckers. Yeah. And they support hard as shit. They go hard in the paint. Well, I just hope that when that movie comes out that you enjoy it. That you spread the word. That's the only thing is that I, I will be going hard. You'll see me on everyone's podcast. Don't be like, Jesus Christ, is Bert on everyone's fucking podcast? Because that's what I say. That's what I say. I go, well, what the fuck's he promoting? He's on Tim Dillon. He's on Ryan Sickler. He's on fucking your mom's house, Joe Rogan. Jesus Christ, Bert. <laughs> fucking Thick Boy Studios? Are you fucking serious? We get it. Your fucking movie's coming out. <laughs> be cool, okay? Be cool and just and just... 
support my movie, The Machine, that will be coming out, and 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 I hope everyone enjoys it. I, I can't I'm wait. really, I'm really, I'm really excited. I love you, bro. I love you. Thanks. I love you more. Uh, as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>